thanks for staying with us. Many drivers and commuters commented on Wednesday that traffic in the city seemed to flow better when the traffic lights were turned off. The traffic lights project has been touted by the mayor and traffic police as a significant enhancement to the flow of traffic in the city. But anecdotal information from drivers tell a much different story. Here is what some of them had to say. Laughing at the about the traffic, it is working properly. Mm -hmm. It's causing a little traffic on afternoon and even on morning. Mm -hmm. So look a while ago, I just passed there, I saw it, it drinking mm -hmm. and there's no traffic. So that it's not working properly. So because they, um, they put it off now, there's no traffic, everything is moving smooth. Mm -hmm. So what they have to do, they have to review that, you know, and, and fix it properly, you know. I mean, if they have to, um, how do you call it, um, program it better or whatever, it will work. But now, but now it's, just, it's off now and no traffic. Everybody moving freely, there's no problem. When they bring back that them lights, like, you know, they program it too slow. So it's causing a feedback. Because the last, the last two weeks there, the last two to three weeks, all before that, we were having a free flow. And them did I don't find it flowing them days because of the traffic now. You see today, you see how it's flowing today? Because it's off today. It's flowing properly today. Because it's off. But when it's on, it's too slow. They have to be, they have to reprogram it back again. Yeah, you know, because it's really too slow, man. It not, right now, the traffic light not good there. It better, it better as it blinking, because the drivers, like us, the experienced drivers, we are causing new traffic jam. The traffic light, when you have it working, you have it for rookie drivers. But drivers that can't drive already, as it blinking, no traffic. Right now, they have no traffic in town. It much better like that. So I rather see it blink. If when school, well, I don't know. If school level open, okay, and we don't know about that. If school open, then they're going to put traffic. But right now, leave it, leave it. Leave. The National Council on Public Transportation has indicated that the transportation sector will soon be operating with a cashless system. Geneve Gonzag tells us more in this report. The National Council on Public Transportation has been advocating for the use of a cashless system for payment of drivers for a while. Following increased incidents of bus drivers being robbed of all their valuables, President of the NCOPT, Godfrey Ferdinand, says the association and other Ministry of Transportation officials are steadily working on implementing a cashless system. I really know for a fact that we are working um, towards a cashless system. Obviously, there are some little hiccups, um, but we are closer than before in terms of operating a cashless system. There are just some um, little hurdles that we have to um, go over, and then we will be having a cashless system hopefully within the next six to seven months or, or, or less. He says there are still teeth in issues that need to be ironed out and explained how the system will work. With all the technology that is available, we are actually pursuing all of them. Um, the, the system that we presently pursuing is one with a card. And hopefully, um, maybe the, the wallet can come in a bit later because, you know, technology is always developing. Um, but yes, for now, it's going to be a card. Um, yes, we do not have schools now, but we are hoping that with the school children, they can have a bracelet. So first, they wouldn't be losing their card or anything, but it would be on the bracelet and it can be scanned. Ferdinand explained that consideration will be given to the elderly and individuals who are not tech-savvy. That will always be addressed. Um, obviously, the cashless system will not be something that just comes in and you just implement uh, a card system. It will be a dual system within the first year or so. And when a person gets accustomed to the system, then we will be able to maybe move towards a, a totally cashless system. Ferdinand says... This initiative will benefit drivers greatly as it will lower the incidence of drivers being robbed of all their monies. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Genevieve Gonzag. According to Education Minister Dr. Gail Rigobert, every student will soon be receiving an electronic device to assist them with online learning. The president of the National Principals Association has welcomed the initiative but stresses that more needs to be done for households that cannot afford internet connectivity. Due to the rise in cases of COVID-19 on Ireland, teaching has taken on the online modality. While it may be smooth sailing for some students, some continue to suffer. Dr. Gail Rigobert recently announced that every child will be given an electronic device to help with the online learning modality. The president of the National Principals Association, Valerie St. Helen Henry, has welcomed the news. Every single principal on island, and by extension the teachers, 
would be thrilled to hear a news like that um, as to how soon we are not sure it's good news yes but it is welcoming that um, it's finally the need to ensure that every child on island has an access to a device is an excellent idea. St. Helen says, in this current situation, the giving of a device is only step one. She says, given the precarious situation that COVID-19 has put many in, connectivity is still a huge issue. I can tell you from my point as a principal, there are students that have been given devices through corporate citizens, schools negotiate and so on. And lo and behold, sadly, we have students who they have the device and there's still the issue of access to internet. And it's very, very critical and it's sad that as a principal, you, you sit and you still hear some students, their teachers complain, they're not getting this student online and so on. And you as the principal, you need to provide some support, find out what's going on, you make calls, and when you speak to parents, it's heartbreaking that some of them are grappling with not having internet access. Some have criticized the education minister for the announcement, given the fact that her ministry put a stop to the SLP administration's laptop program. St. Helen says she is not too concerned about the politics of the matter and believes good sense prevailed as COVID-19 has changed the dynamics of education the world over. After a number of needs assessments were carried out and maybe realizing that there's a great need for the devices, I know at some schools um, for the past few years, um, the, the focus was to enhance labs, um, computer labs at the schools to bring in the computers to the classrooms. The Principals Association president has commended community members who have stepped up to provide children in need with access to their home Wi-Fi. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Genevieve Gonzaga. Veteran journalist Earl Bouske is calling on his local counterparts to be on their guards as journalists everywhere face injustices in the execution of their duties. The call comes as France intends to pass a law making it illegal for images of police engaged in wrongdoing to be published. Bouske says local journalists cannot simply hope that it does not happen on local soil, but they must be prepared. The security bill in question forbids journalists, particularly camera people, from recording any images of police in action, particularly during protest action that can be used against the police. The law has brought a level of uncertainty amongst journalists as to whether the work they do will be in contravention of that law. The draft security law, which has already passed the lower house of the French parliament, aims to protect police officers who are occasionally targeted by terrorists or abused on social media. Veteran journalist Earl Bousquet says when journalism is being used as a weapon against journalists, it is time to recognize the impediments being placed as a stumbling block in the execution of that work. The debate going on right now is how do you distinguish between an image that can be used against the police and an image that cannot be used against the police. So that has forced a level of uncertainty on the part of journalists in terms of what they can film and what they cannot film, which was the intention of the law, uh, to make us not want to record police doing wrong things outside of uh, their uh, mandate. Bousquet says it only serves to remind us that attacks on journalists have never died. The United Nations keeps a, 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 a count of the amount of journalists killed every year during the execution of their duties. We don't know these things in the Caribbean. Journalists getting shot for, for, for taking photographs. We, 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 the closest we've come to that is me being held up, you know, by a police officer who took my camera and exposed the film because he was a cameraman himself, you know, um, a million years ago. But these things, because they do not happen in the Caribbean or are not happening like they used to happen, they do exist in Haiti, where journalists are dying 
um, on a, in the middle of their work. It happens in the Dominican Republic. He called for the media association in St. Lucia to be revived. Most important of all of that is how to, we have to be organized. St. Lucian media workers have to activate their national organization. If it's not working, fix it. If it's broken, build it back. But unless you're organized, you will continue to be in a situation where half of this way, half of that way, we're entering an election season, every one of us votes, and we have our political and partisan preferences that can boil over in how we relate to each other during the election campaign until and unless we have an organized body that will remind us that we are all the same. Offenders in France would risk one year in prison and a 45,000 euro fine. The bill was later amended to include a precision that the intent to harm must be manifest and that the law should not interfere with press freedom. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. Stay with us. There's more news coming up after the break.